Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this CERT Mike Explains video, we're going to discuss Network Address Translation, or NAT. Now, NAT is a very important concept in both networking and security, and it's something you'll want to understand thoroughly before your next certification exam. Before we can talk about NAT, we need to do a brief refresher on IP addresses. Now, you might already know that IP addresses uniquely identify a computer on a network. Most of the IP addresses that we use today look something like this one. Four numbers that are each between 0 and 255, separated by periods. This address format is known as the dotted quad notation. Now, routers, switches, and other network devices use these IP addresses to find computers on the global internet and route packets to their final destinations. Every computer needs an IP address, and we use two different kinds of them. Public IP addresses are assigned by a central network authority, and they can be used to reach systems located across the internet. Private IP addresses are available for anyone's use, but they may only be used on local networks, and they won't work across the internet. Let's begin by discussing public IP addresses. These addresses are centrally managed by a group known as the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, or ICANN. ICANN breaks addresses up into blocks and gives them out to regional authorities in different countries for distribution. These regional authorities each take responsibility for a geographic area of the world. For example, the American Registry for Internet Numbers, ARIN, governs the distribution of IP addresses in the United States and Canada. Now, one of the major issues with IP addresses is that they're a scarce resource, especially when it comes to the traditional dotted quad IPv4 addresses. There are no large blocks of IPv4 addresses available for assignment anymore, and the only way to get one today is by purchasing or renting them from other organizations such as internet service providers. In the early days of networking, many organizations would simply obtain a large block of public IP addresses and use them on all of their systems. For example, if an organization owned the 8.1.0.0 network, they might have just freely handed out those addresses on their network. The scarcity of IP addresses combined with security concerns makes this impractical today. Now, why are these addresses so scarce? Well, with the dotted quad notation of IPv4, there are only 4.3 billion possible IP addresses. Now, that might sound like a lot, but Cisco estimates that there are currently around 7.5 billion mobile devices alone in the world. That count doesn't even include servers, desktop computers, networked appliances, or other non-mobile devices. There simply aren't enough possible addresses to assign every device in the world a unique IP address. The solution to this dilemma is the use of private IP address ranges. When ICANN's predecessor organizations divided up the original IP address space, they reserved three different address ranges for use on private networks. These ranges are the 10 network from 10.0.0.1 to 10.255.255.255, .255 .255 .255, a portion of the 172 network from 172.16.0.1 to 172.31.255.255, and the third is the 192.168 network from 192.168.0.1 to 192.168.255.255. These ranges are called private IP addresses, and anyone can use them on their local networks. The only catch is that these private addresses are reserved for use on private networks, and they cannot be used for routing traffic across the internet. Now today, organizations typically use a balance of public and private IP addresses. They use private addresses broadly within their private networks, assigning them to all of their internal systems. They then use a small number of public IP addresses for systems that require public access. Now, in the case of this private network, administrators might assign private addresses from the 192.168 range. Now, of course, there is a problem with this approach. Systems that have private IP addresses cannot communicate on the internet using those addresses because those addresses aren't routable. Thousands of organizations around the world use those addresses on their internal network, so remote systems would have no way of telling where reply traffic should actually go. Now, the solution to this problem is network address translation. 
And before I tell you about NAT, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. Routers and firewalls perform NAT translation at the border of a network. When a system with a private IP address, such as this laptop with private address 192.168.1.1, wants to communicate on the internet, the NAT device lends the system a public IP address temporarily for that communication. The NAT device then records the public and private IP address translation in a table, and when a reply comes in for the public address, the NAT device looks up the corresponding private address in that table, then routes the packet to the correct system on the private network. Now, NAT does introduce new concerns for security professionals. It brings the privacy benefits of hiding internal IP addresses from the public internet and limiting direct access to internal systems, but NAT also makes it difficult to correlate activity on a public IP address back to the true originator. For this reason, most organizations maintain logs of their NAT translations that allow them to determine who was using a particular public IP address at any given time. NAT's a very useful technology, but it is somewhat limited because it requires a public IP address for every system on the network that needs to communicate on the internet. Since most organizations have a limited pool of public addresses, they can quickly run into a situation where their pool is exhausted and no new systems can communicate on the internet. Port address translation, or PAT, solves this problem by allowing multiple systems to share the same public IP address. Instead of recording translations between IP addresses, PAT assigns each connection a different port on a public IP address. This way, many different systems can share the same public IP address at any point in time. I hope this video helped you understand how network address translation works. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.